everything is have to be people based. I don't care your B to B, B to C. For me, that's only P to P. Who are you called to serve this season? Is also, I think, very, very important. The deeper self awareness you are willing to accept, the faster you will grow. On episode 338 of the podcast, we are talking about the Power of One framework, which Kelly describes as the fastest and most sustainable way to position yourself as the market of one choice, how you can attract the right type of clients and scale up your business. Let's do it. What's up, friend? Hey, I am Ryan Coral from Studio Sherpas, and this is the Grow Your Video Business Podcast. This is a show for corporate and commercial filmmakers where we talk about the business of production because everybody wants to know. I don't talk about how to shoot or edit or tell better stories, although that's fun. On this show, we talk about stuff like sales and marketing. We talk about mindset and process and systems, things that you need in your business to do it for a long time and to do it well, to thrive and not just survive. I've built a seven-figure video production business, uh, I was gonna say on my own, but with a team. And uh, I share with you uh, amazing people I know that are successful in their own right and a lot of the failures <laughs> and things that that I've done uh, well as well over the last 18 years of, of being in this business. So if you're ready to show up for your clients and put in the work for this business because you love it and you want to do it because you love it and you want to do more of it, then buckle in and I think you're you're in the right place. Before we get into this episode, I did want to mention that we are currently taking applications for the mastermind, and this is the best time to get in. I'm not gonna mention the mastermind, uh, or at least enrolling for the mastermind. The mastermind starts back up in July, and so we're taking applications and doing interviews, and if you're kinda like, Ryan, what the heck is the mastermind? Uh, really quick here, the mastermind is a group of up to 12 people and we meet twice a month virtually. Uh, we do a retreat once a year in person and we're doing kind of like a mini get together uh, before the Onward Summit. Uh, but it's a place where twice a month we're gathering uh, two to three people each session get a hot seat. So they get 20 to 30 minutes to kind of share a, a struggle, a frustration, something in their business that they're trying to overcome. Uh, people share their websites for inputs. People share a budget for a proposal that they're putting together. Uh, it's just, where are you in your business? And maybe you need accountability. Maybe you have goals in your business, things that you're wanting to try to do. And the Mastermind is a place where we all support each other in the context of an intimate group. And uh, twice a month for 80 minutes, we're meeting, and then we meet offline. We've got uh, an online chat forum. And then I also make myself available via Voxer, which is like a walkie-talkie app for mini coaching. So if you have questions, if you're trying to figure something out, um, anything. Uh, people shoot me a quick message and say, hey, Ryan, I'm, I'm stuck here. What do you got for me? And so I offer that uh, as part of a membership inside of the Mastermind. It's only a five-month commitment, and it's only 500 bucks a month. So if you want to know more about it, you can go to studiosherpas.com slash mastermind, and all of the details are there. That's also where you can apply. If you're on the fence, you're like, I'm not totally sure I'm the right fit. I would encourage you to apply anyway. And uh, that way I at least have your information. So if you know a year from now, you're like, hey, now is the right time. Uh, but at least go through the process, kind of see what we're after, get a better understanding of, of what it is that we might be looking for. Uh, but if you're like, man, this is a no brainer, then go fill out your, the, the application like right now. Uh, because like I said, we're doing interviews and we're, uh, finalizing the group and we start July 16th. I think it's the first day. It's like the second Thursday in July. So uh, that's it. Thank you for letting me share that. Again, it's studiosherpas.com slash mastermind. And uh, yeah, that's where you can get all the information and apply. Okay, let's jump into this episode. So glad that you're here. Here we go. 
What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to another episode of the show. Today, I have with me Kelly Botter, who is a business coach who's been featured pretty much everywhere. Uh, Industry-leading publications, podcasts like The Huffington Post, Upreneur FM, Eternal Leadership, Stewarding Your Influence, Kingdom-Driven Entrepreneurs, and many more. She's also an author and a fellow podcaster. Kelly, I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, It's my pleasure, Ryan. Well, I'm very excited. So we have a mutual friend in Mike Kim. Uh, Mike tends to like just be such a wealth of great friends who are amazing at what they do. Um, What out of all of the work that you do, Kelly, what is the most fun or the most fulfilling? Where are you finding the most fun and the most fulfillment in the work that you're doing? (laughs) That is such a big question. Um, (laughs) I think um, as a life journey to speak, uh, I would say as a mom. <laughs> uh, I think as a mother, it's uh, it's a, such an adventure. Uh, you know, when I was young and wild, you know, my girlfriends always described that Kelly will never have a kid. And, uh, you know, because I they saw me, I'm, I'm pretty independent. Uh, mm. I would just refocus on my career and all that. And I think... Motherhood really is a process of not only, you know, uh, personal development, uh, it's also a process of really humbling you, you know, uh, and that kind of just to put you in a very different, different uh, spots and different kind of uh, areas. Um, yeah, I would say one of the top, top is uh, personal growth. And I think uh, in the other side, in the business wise, I always tell people that entrepreneurial journey is one of the toughest journey, uh, ever. Also for personal development, right? Because yeah. we know that we always have those ups and downs and moments. And it's not like always, you know, you follow other people's formula, step one, two, yeah. three, then you will get there, yeah. right? Every time when we hit the bottom that we thought that's the bottom of the bottom, uh, that it's that moment, how you got out of it and a lot of people did not get out of it. So that's why the failure rate is so high, right? But what I mean is that moment, there's no amount of external resources, strategies and all that can get yourself out there. Rather it's who you are that moment will define that moment either it's a stepping stone or it's i call it vod you know a valley of disappointment or valley of death right yeah so i hope that answers the question wow yeah it's who you are that's that's uh that's pretty powerful uh, we could probably just uh create a whole podcast about this idea What about for you in your own entrepreneurial journey? Like what VOD did you uh, run into to to be, I mean, to be doing the work that you you are doing today, your resume, all of, you know, the success that you've had, I would imagine that that you did hit some kind of rock bottom to come and realize, you know, to have an epiphany to say like, this is the work that that I feel called to do that I need to do uh, to be able to help other people. What what was that moment for you? Again, Ryan, I think you 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 ask a very big questions, so I will just <laughs> try to answer how um how 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 it comes to mind. Okay. Yeah. So when those of you even listening, you probably f- couldn't quite figure that. Well, why is she? Is she American? Is she, obviously she doesn't sound British at all. And, <laughs> you know, um, I'm originally from Taiwan and I came from nothing. Actually, I came from a very, uh, broken, uh, family, you know, situation. You know, there was one and a half decades of life, my, my life. I never know what happened to me in the night because of family violence and sexual abuse. So growing up, there it, there was no such an idea, say, self-worth. And later, when I tried to climb the corporate ladder, um, there was in the very uh, male-dominated situation. Um, 
they, I was one of the youngest and, uh, worst, uh, female corporate executive. So there was a time like, you know, in US, I love a movie called Hidden Figures. And Hidden Figures is a movie like talk about a group of real hero for NASA launch, right? Uh, uh, the basically a, a group of uh, African Americans, the ladies. And I remember the main cast, Catherine, right? Because she was the only woman in the group. So whenever she needed to go to ladies room, during her work, work day, she had to run blocks away to go to ladies room. And when I look at that, I saw, huh, I did not have to run blocks away to go ladies room, but I did have to run a couple of floors down to, to ladies room. Whenever I went to attend some, you know, important board meeting or so forth that often during the coffee break, cause I'm the only woman, I couldn't figure out where is the ladies room. And I asked the host and the host said, well, we don't have a ladies room on this floor. So then later on when, um, now back to the question, uh, during building a business, I remember, uh, just earlier on, you know, cause moments ago, Ryan did mention that I'm also a fellow podcast. Uh, my podcast, Christian CEO podcast, now it's nearly seven years old. And seven, eight years ago, when I was in one of the very well-known business coaches mastermind, okay, not my team, okay, <laughs> surely <it's> not <laughs> somebody else, but uh, he shall remain nameless because he is too famous. Everybody knows him. So he asked me, say, hey, so when it was my turn, um, what do you want to do in the next, next step? And uh, I told him that I just feel like I need to start a podcast. And he asked me and he said, so you mean you're going to start a podcast in Chinese, right? I said, oh, no, actually, because uh, 90% of my clients and audience, they are all in North America. So obviously it will be in English. And he told me, say, well, you know, you are a big girl, you're a businesswoman, so I should tell you this. As American, I wouldn't listen to your podcast. Uh, and similar thing happened when 2010, when I was led to write my book, A Little Girl Called Grace. And that's, you know, over 10, 11 years ago, uh, there was no such a thing, podcast and, you know, not so popular now. So we had to do a traditional way to pitch the book. So I remember I, at that moment, I live in Vegas and I um, traveled to New York. After three months of media training, we went to pitch like over 20 media outlets, including radios and TV and magazine, that type of stuff. And I remember when it was my turn to pitch a, a CNBC journalist, and we were given 90 seconds, 60 seconds in, and he he, he stopped me. And I said, oh, is the pitch not good enough? And he looked at me and said, Listen, as American, I won't read your book because your first language is not English. Okay. So you ask me what kind of, you know, uh, valley, valleys, challenges I have in mm. experience. I mean, there are just two of them, you know, uh, people kept telling me that I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. But you know, since I'm a personal face, I consult, you know, another ultimate business coach, right? Mm. I say, well, <laughs> what's going on here? You know, and sometimes myself also kind of told myself out of it. When, uh, my, when my, that business coach told me about my podcast, I took it. I took it and said, okay, then I guess I shouldn't start a podcast. But wow. it just is such a way that, you know, when God wants you to do something, you know, he has a way to do it, you know, but that's a totally different story. Uh, in the end of the day, uh, he sent two influencers in a conference and come to my hotel room, record the very first episode while I did not even have a show. And from there, just the rest is, rest is the history. 
So I hope that answered your question. You know,、mm-hmm. uh, it's in the end when you are in this journey, the entrepreneurial journey. You know, sometimes I hate it. Uh, nowadays, when we in social medias or、uh, TV, when people talk about the term entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, it's almost like equal to celebrity that kind of feeling. But、mm. actually, no, it's not. <laughs>、uh, in reality, you know,、um, uh, the journey is very rewarding, but I don't think it's for everyone either. Yeah, that's that is very true. Kelly, listening to that, I'm like, wow, she's really going, like, getting real, real, sharing some real vulnerable stories.、Uh, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for、uh, for trusting us with those stories. I, I'm I want to like part of me is like I'm so sorry that you went through that, and at the same time, I'm also like I'm glad that you did, only because it seems to have motivated you today to be doing this work in a really powerful way. And sometimes, without those stories or without those moments where we, you know, hit rock bottom,、uh, we can't we can't excel, you know, at at, at the same level. So、um, I, I f- feel empathy. But I'm also grateful for the work that you're able to do as a result of,、uh, you know, the story that that you've been through. Thank you. Yeah. Wow.、Uh, so just amazing.、Um, thank you for sharing all that.、Uh, I would love to. I mean, you have so much. There's there's just so much in you. We could probably make a four part, you know, eight hour long、uh, mini series of topics and things that we could talk about.、Um, I definitely want to talk about、uh, this framework, Power of One.、Uh, is this your framework? And、um, if so, what is it your framework? Technically, no. And I will tell you why.、Uh, <laughs> okay. So, I think、uh, just right before COVID, and I was invited to、uh, one of my business mentors, Chris Dawkins.、Uh, his sign- oh yeah, yeah, his signature event、yep. uh, called You Pronounce Summit in、mm-hmm. London to speak. And when I still remember that summer, because his、uh, event is always in November. So that summer we sat down in、um, somewhere coffee shop. In London, and、um, he told me, "Hey, girl, I want you to speak on my event in November." And I look at him; I nearly spill my coffee. The reason why <laughs> is because I mean, his speakers are the level of like Michael Hyatt, Amy Porterfield, you know, those awesome heroes that are in my mind、yeah. when it comes to business wise. And I ask him, say,、um, "Are you sure?" And he look at me like. <laughs> Oh, Why not? You know,、mm-hmm. the funny thing is, three about three weeks before that,、uh, during my devotional time, and God kind of told me, say, "Hey, the stage is is about to open a whole lot more for you."、Mm-hmm. So now back to the coffee time. He asked me.、Uh, so I say, "Okay, are you sure? You know, I don't want to ruin."、Uh, I almost say I don't want to ruin your, you know, your reputation. And、uh, he he look at me. He said, "Listen, as much as I like you, I will not allow anyone to ruin my signature event." Okay, I say, "Ah,、uh, fair enough." And I asked him, "What do you want to share?" He said, "Oh, very easy. Just share like one idea." Having worked for you and worked for your clients for the last decade, right? Because he knew I've been coaching for long, and I thought, oh, okay. You know, I kind of feel relief because I thought just share one idea cannot be that hard, right? So <laughs> the problem is the next five to six weeks, I couldn't nail down. Yeah, which yeah. idea? Well, that's the common disease of entrepreneurs, right? We had way too many ideas. And、yep. then,、uh, so in that week that I need to submit my topic and also slides, and I was totally stuck. And I remember I was standing in front of a flip chart and in the complaining mode. Okay,、mm-hmm. and I write down a gigantic one because one idea, right? One、yep. on my flip chart, and I talk to God. I say, "Look, it's your idea. I did not pitch about this." So since this is your idea, it's your problem. So 
Why now? I still <laughs> don't have any idea. And then I feel God just kind of tap on my shoulder, say, "It's on the paper." And I look at the one gigantic one, right? Then he say, "What is that one thing that you always help people to do? No matter they are just get started or they gonna scale to six, seven, eight figures. When they got stuck and you did something and you help them to overcome it." I say, "Oh." Then I have a epiphany moment, right?、Mm. So that's how the Power One framework came along. Then I present that framework at his event, and that was the one speech that got the standing ovation.、Mm, wow! And I think he, yeah, he shared like over nearly four hundred entrepreneurs from thirty something countries. And not many pair of eyes stay dry in the end of that presentation, including Chris. He he blamed me that he shouldn't be crying as a host, but I made him. <laughs> um, I knew then that was not me.、Mm, yeah, that was yeah, God. Okay, and and that's why you asked me, is that my framework? Yeah, human wise, yeah. yes, but yeah, technically yeah. not. Beautiful story. Okay, well, tell us what is the power of one for now. I, I don't make me cry because I, I I'm easily that can happen. So please don't make me cry. But、uh, explain what it is and 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 break it down for us if you would. Okay, so the very simple power one framework. It's what is that one specific transformation real result you can provide to your number one type of clients, right? And communicate the best way you can as the best version of you right now. So it's one result, one client, right? One way to communicate it, and the best current version of you. One, 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 one. So it's a power one. Obviously, as a personal face, we also point back who it's the one gave us all the ideas, you know. And so that's a power one framework. I am not so focused on say, okay, you must、um, niche or niche. Well, depends on where you're from,、yeah. Europe or America. Okay, <laughs>、uh, to like one thing. That's not what we are saying. But what we are saying is, you know, as a human being, right? We know multitasking is a myth, right?、Mm, right. So also. We are in a very different seasons of life individually. As a business owner ourselves, for example, my children now they are over twenty years old. The way I run business will be very different than when a mother, let's say,、mm-hmm. a new mom, if she just have new baby or or her children are toddler age, right? So the way that she gonna focus on her business model, who she serve, probably different than mine. Right, right. So, well, what we want to be really different than other people's framework out there. Not, I want to be different, but hey, again, you know how that framework came along. Basically, meaning, what a major difference is, a lot of、uh, marketing program or business program out there, they always tell us, okay, figure out who you serve, their pain point, package a solution, boom, you should be done. But they rarely deal with. This person, the business owner,、mm. this person. Yeah. So yeah. no matter that how we copy or model after people's solution, oftentimes you get burned, you get overworked, and you still get you don't have result to show for it because you did not approach your business from inside out. That's really powerful,、um, and I think we can all relate to that. I think we can all even relate to courses that we've bought. You know, events that we've gone to, books that we've read, where it's just like, yeah, everybody else is talking about this book, and and I'm reading it, it's just not hitting home, or I did the things, and it's and it's just not working. Why not? And it's like, well, there there is, you know, there are probably like general foundational things that yes, the, these things are normally smart and good, but if you're 
in a completely different season of life or different maturity in your business or, or in your personal life or whatever, it's just not going to hit the same. And we can look at people who are further ahead of us and be frustrated because we're not there. And it doesn't seem like they, they've, you know, they're any or much different than we are, but we still aren't achieving the success that they are. And, and I have like my own, uh, story where there's there's a, a fellow filmmaker that is in my area and to see this person's success I'm like oh my goodness I've been so jealous in the past I'm, I'm not usually anymore but seeing the work that they're doing and the success that they're having and then I, I have to remember and realize like this person actually uh, has, has been single like the majority of their life my career started really like when we started having kids and like my passion and my focus, my entire career has been my family and my kids in wanting to create a business that, that supports my life. And, and I want to be available. I want to take my family on vacation. I want to, you know, spend time. I want to do everything around me so I can go to track events and in sports and my daughters, you know, be involved in the PTA and all that stuff. And so I can look at the success that this person's having, knowing that, that person can work 60, 70, 80 hours a week if they want, and they're not distracted by anything like a spouse or kids. And, and so that was, that was a realization that I had kind of, even as you're explaining this framework and I'm like, yeah, it doesn't, it's not just like follow these steps and like get this result. There's, there's so much more at play in all that. Yeah, exactly. And, and just like you said, there are so many different things uh, in life and, uh, not only the season of life, but also, you know, everybody, the, um, the stages of the business are different. Uh, yeah. so yeah. And then that means their, uh, uh, I call profit style is different. You know, some people, they are <clears throat> more, you know, love to do the business that say they only need to work with a few key clients. Uh, okay. but then, you know, they really, very detailed and very provide a very luxury intimate experience or versus maybe somebody else they say no i don't like to deal with the people that much but i rather <laughs> deal with the system right so again yep. it's a very different you know situation um you know god creates individually very different with different gifts that how we can serve people out there so you really need to be honest with yourself and yep. that's why I always say the deeper self-awareness you are willing to accept, the faster you will grow. Yeah, man, I, I love this. Uh, I think this is very freeing uh, for, for all of us listening and taking notes uh, because it, it does just seem like, uh, yeah, I just follow the formula and it, and it <laughs> but even like my desire, like what I want a year from now or five years from now should be, is probably different than any other person that I'm in this community of filmmakers with. We all have like little nuances and things. And even as you're describing, like, yeah, so like I'd be happy with a hundred different clients. Like I love people. I love, you know, all the different, but then, you know, I know some guys and gals in this community are like, man, if I, if I had one key client or like three key clients, that would be great. That would be enough. And that would be fulfilling just so different so it's just like it's kind of mind-bending uh to to think the frustrations that i think we've experienced that don't necessarily need to be that but i think this this framework that you're sharing this is one of those frameworks i think that is is probably more broad and and should connect with people it's not like uh what whatever stage you're at to be able to know these, what are your, your one things? So how, how do you walk through, uh, or how can somebody, you know, that's listening to this episode, um, how can they ask themselves that question? Like what, how would you recommend them, uh, to, to think through this, this framework? I think, right. So it's a four parts, right? One is yourself and another one is your clients. And then from there, what kind of solution you provide and how you communicate that. Right. So, you think about these four key parts. And I think from you as a person, as a business owner, right? Uh, obviously when we, we guide our client goes through like, uh, you know, their, uh, expertise, their past and their, uh, experience in, in life, right? Cause, you know, the reason why we are unique is because of those things. And you, 
you need to kind of take an inventory of that. Then you also, you might want to look at, you know, uh, how it's your mindset when you come to time, when you come to finance, when you come to relationship, all that, right? Uh, because that will impact you, how you, again, how you're going to grow your business. Um, so for example, just, I, I, we don't have much time, but just take one area. Uh, when I say space, right? What, what I'm, what I mean is mental space, right? A lot of people don't talk about this. Uh, when we run a business or even as long as you're breathing, you are using your mental space, right? Mental bandwidth. And normally we will walk people uh, our clients go through, you know, let's look at your digital space. Let's look at your physical space. So for example, have you ever had that experience run like, let's say there's a spot in your home, right? Maybe in garage or one corner in your house, in a room. And every time you pass by, you, you tell yourself, I gotta clean that up, right? <laughs> you, you kind of tell yourself, take a, yeah. take a note, Multiple. mental note. And yep. then yep. this thing happened maybe a couple of days, <laughs> probably a couple of weeks. And before it, before you know it, maybe stay there like for month or year. Like I say, people <laughs> say, Oh, how long I should actually clean up my garage? Right. So yeah. what I just say is just one example that you allow that occupy in your mental bandwidth unconsciously. But can you imagine that every day our thoughts is they say over 60,000 thoughts of that kind of thing, right? So if you keep upon piling up the unsolved stuff there, and then you're wondering when you sit down from a computer that you need a creative power to do something that that's a content for your business, and you try to like, what am I sure I'm doing? You know, you couldn't because you don't have enough mental bandwidth because you need to clean up, right? And that is just one thing that we're going to go through in a process, you know? So all this, it's, um, that's why I'm saying the more honest that you are willing to, you know, be with yourself, the faster you'll grow. Because after go through that process, some sometimes my clients say, oh, this is so painful, but boy, I have a breakthrough, right? The other thing is also your, you know, how do you spend your money? How do you save your money, right? That type of thing. Um, so in another words, we go through with you as a person, we figure out which season you are, you know, what is your expertise experience so far? And then, then we figure out who you are called to serve in this season, in current season, not past season, not future season, yeah. right? And from there, then we figure out then what is the number one transformational result that you can create for these people. And then we figure out how to articulate the value of your offer. Because a lot of time it's not like your offer doesn't have value. The problem is you are not articulated well enough yeah. so in the receiving end they cannot tell is that yeah. offer good for me or not so that's yeah approximately the pro process i love that thinking thinking about who are you called to serve this season is also i think very very important and, I, and i'm really just speaking from my own where i'm at today two and a half months ago I was at a completely different spot and I had been in that spot for probably 11 years of like, this is who we serve. This is, this is the brand. This is the direction that we're going. This is the website. This is, you know, and maybe we changed out a video here or there to say like, Hey, let's, let's just update and make sure that people know that this is the kind of work, but it's basically the same. It's just a little updated. And did I, I didn't realize that I was growing restless for probably 10 years with, with the, the work, not the work, the work was great, but for myself, uh, there was a sense of unfulfillment. And in the last two and a half months, I started this, this started really getting unpacked. And 
now I feel like, oh, this season, that was, that was a season and we serve those clients. We serve them. I think we serve them well. And we have like a new offer and it's, and it's for a new group that we haven't really served in a dedicated uh, capacity. And in this, in this might be for a season, but to, to embrace it as this is where we're in, and this is okay. Let's put a pin in what we've been doing and let's, let's spend our time and energy focusing on this, uh, this new sort of place. I think that gives people permission also to say like, okay, well maybe we've done things like this for so long, but it's, you know, everything is changing, especially in the world of video and, and content with chat GPT and AI and all of this stuff. So we kind of need to be nimble and re-ask that question on a somewhat regular basis of like, who are we serving who we're, we're, we really need to be serving right now? Or, or does that need to change? Maybe it just needs to change by a degree. Maybe it needs to be changed by, by a lot. But, but I love that that is part of this, uh, this process that you take people through. Yeah, the only thing for sure in the business world is change. <laughs> mm, right. Right. <laughs> oh, that's really good. So for somebody that it isn't, you know, I, I, I definitely am going to have you share your, your website and how people can engage with you um, and, you know, coaching and all that stuff. But for somebody that just says like, okay, I want to tackle this framework or try to tackle as best I can, like right now here on my own, how would you recommend somebody just to, to kind of go through that? Just grab, grab a couple of hours and, and, and ask them, them these questions. Any, any other advice on how somebody might be able to at least start asking these questions and going through this process? Yeah, I think uh, moments ago, I think I pretty much share how you go through, you know, you can yeah. ask yourself those questions uh, maybe uh, really zoom out. I always say one of the most essential skill for entrepreneurs is able to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we are too focused on trees and forgot the forest, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want you to kind of uh, this is your work on your business time. It's not your work in the business time. You know, work on your business. You zoom out. Maybe you take a day. You know. Or, or even longer, you know, uh, normally I call it CEO retreat. You know, normally we have two, yeah. three days, check, just, just check myself into a hotel. And you look at, say, okay, uh, where am I now in all the areas, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in your life area, in your finance, your relationship, all that, right? Then you ask yourself, say, what type of, what kind of business I run now can support what I want? in my life for now for short term for you know three to yeah. five years for you know for long term right this is this is the type of thing you need to ask yourself and then from there you say okay therefore you know we say you know people you know people perish because they don't they don't have vision right you need to have vision you have to walk backwards you have to reverse engineering yeah. back say okay now you're clearly what you want then you're going to say, okay, so therefore, then look at myself now in the business and in life. Is there's anything, what I need to change? You have to be honest with yourself, what need to be changed, right? Sometimes change, just as like Ryan said, can be just one little thing. Maybe, okay, I need to get up one hour earlier every day yeah. because then I can do X, Y, Z. Or sometimes maybe require a little bit more. Say, okay, uh, it look like if I want, this is my pushing season. Then that mean I need to yeah. be stronger physically as well. Then you might start to have to work out a little bit more physically. Mm -hmm. So you might have to establish some new habits, right? Yeah. Um, so that type of thing. And then after that, you can say, okay, so what kind of if my goal is this, is then what kind of clients should I serve? And if I know this, this type of person, cause, you know, again, um, sorry for those people, you are not Christian, but you know, Ryan want me to be authentic. So here we go. Biblical principle, or you just treat like uh, some wise book say, everything is have to be people based. I don't care your B2B, B2C, for me, that's only P to P. Chris Ducker always loves to say that. People to people, right? So 
you deal it with yourself and then you say who you're going to serve and then really understand what they need. What is that number one transformational result you can create within your capacity? And from there, then you have to, you know, know that, learn that how to communicate that, right? AI tools, everything is good. Just remember they are tools, meaning they how good is the result of those tools? It depends on how good your input is. It's your human brilliance plus the tools, then you can have a great result. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. I I think I don't think it's uh, coincidental that so many of the guests that, that I have on the show we talk about retreat and we talk about getting away and we talk about working on the business and carving out time to think, right? To have some mental capacity, what you're saying, zoom out, to be able to zoom out and to be able to zoom in, but to, you have to be intentional about that. And if you aren't, then it, you're just in the whirlwind. You're in it for a year, five years, 10 years. And you're like, what in the heck have I been doing? I'm not even like, I don't even love this anymore. And when I started, I loved it so much. Like what happened? So to be able to carve out that time and and start asking those questions, whether it's this framework or, uh, or really just asking the question like, what what is bringing me fulfillment and, and how can I do more of it? So, so important, so vital uh, to, um, to, to the work that we do. I know we're almost done. And since you, you kind of like one of, one of the things I want to talk about, but we're, but we're this, this is so great. Uh, you titled it the fastest way to master your focus, multiply your results and gain an unfair advantage to build a profitable personal brand based business. What's the fastest way that you can share uh, some nuggets there for us to do this? Um, really what I just say, what I just said yeah. moments ago, that's the fastest way. And you, you need to, the technology, the way it developed now, okay, AI or not AI, you know, uh, overall the technology. What we need more is the creative thing, creative critical yeah. thinking. Yeah. So you are not possible to do the creative critical thinking if you not uh, be intentional, and mm -hmm. if you. Just take a moment, think of those leaders, no matter which field you are in, those leaders, those people you admired, they are thinkers. They think differently. And that's why the result is different. I love that. And, and it's, it's the, for anybody who's afraid of their job, losing their job, like, oh, now AI can edit video and AI can come up with, you know, scripts and all this stuff. You're so right. At least, <laughs> at least right now, it seems like if you're car, if if you're really focused on critical thinking and and being creative and offering that to your clients, you're in a good space, right? Because because the AI needs an input, and our clients need direction, and our clients don't have the time or the bandwidth to do that, so they want to lean on somebody. And we we have a, a a workshop that we do for our video clients when people come to us and say, "Hey, we need a video." We take them through this two hour workshop, and we get alignment with their team. We ask a lot of questions, and then we guide them through our process, and then we give them a blueprint. We do all of these things that AI can't do these things, and this sets us apart as a video production company because we're leading them through a creative process. So for all of my friends that listen to the show that aren't guiding your clients in this kind of a way and you're just taking orders from a client, those are the clients that are gonna be able to give orders to an AI and get edits for way cheaper. But if, if they can lean on you to help with strategy and to help them critically think about what, what kind of video they need and why do they need that, that's the expertise that you can bring and that's when you can charge and that's when I think you can build some security around like not feeling like you're gonna uh, lose work to AI. So Kelly, I love that point. Uh, this has been so fun. So I've, I've taken a bunch of notes. Um, I just appreciate your perspective and your story is very powerful. So uh, I am grateful uh, for the time that we've gotten. How can people follow along with you on social? Where can they connect with you if they're interested in 
and coaching or any of the other programs that you offer and, and your podcast too. Yeah. Um, everywhere the handle is Katie Bader. The last name is B double A D E R. And uh, we have YouTube channel. We also have, you know, I was mentioned the Christian CEO podcast. Um, yeah. So pretty much everywhere you just key in Katie and also all the information is there. Amazing. Thank you again, Kelly. I appreciate you and wish you continued success in the work that you're doing. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. Okay, friend, for reference, this is episode 338. So if you want to access the show notes, go to studiosherpas.com 338. All that stuff will be there. If you're watching this video and you had a takeaway, an aha moment, something that stood out to you, whether it was about the power of one or something else, then leave a comment or reach out via email, ryan at studiosherpas.com. Would love to hear from you. Would love your feedback. If you like this episode and you think somebody else might enjoy it too, please share it with them. You can take a screen grab of your screen and text it to them and just let them know, hey, I think this is, I thought of you as I was listening to the show. Um, appreciate any shares and uh, that's awesome. So one last reminder, studiosherpas.com slash mastermind if you're interested in uh, checking out and applying for the mastermind. So go get all the information there. And that's all I have for you. It's really fun to do these intros and outros after I uh, make myself a latte because I'm just like, <laughs> uh, anyway, I like you. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Bye.